What's up, YouTubers? So I got an interesting and fun video for today's lesson, and that is, what effect does moisture in a 7018 pose to the strength of the weld on mild steel? So let's get into it. So what I have here is a 7018 that has been marinating in a bottle of water for four or five days. The flux is completely saturated with moisture. I mean, you really couldn't get any more on in a, in a flux if you tried. And the reason that I'm doing this is that we're going to test whether or not all that extra hydrogen that finds its way into the weld pool from this wet rod, if it's going to affect the bend strength of this weld. Now, I put a bunch of links to other videos I have on hydrogen and brittlement and 7018, all of that. And it's in your best interest to watch those and understand them in order to understand fully what's going on here. But I'll give you a brief recap. 7018 welding rods for stick welding are designed to be low hydrogen. All that means is, is that when they're manufactured, they're not manufactured with moisture in the flux. Some fluxes, like your 6010, 6011, etc., have a lot of moisture in that flux, okay? 7018 is designed to have none in it at the point of manufacture, and then it's also designed to be baked out in a rod oven to keep moisture out of the rod so that when you weld certain steels that are susceptible to what's called hydrogen and brittlement, that 7018 can safely weld those, and those primarily being high strength steel, okay? So really, 7018 is a way to get around a problem that exists if you were to weld a higher strength steel with 6010, 6011, or many other rods. And just as a quick recap, hydrogen embrittlement, which I have videos on, again, links in the description. Hydrogen embrittlement is a case where moisture, which is H2O, hydrogen oxygen, in the flux of the rod, gets dissolved into the weld pool and then escapes that weld pool as it's solidifying and it ends up leaving like little holes in the weld metal and in the heat affected zone which basically can cause cracking as it cools and it can also cause ductility problems where when it's stressed it breaks because it's kind of like in in a microscopic form of porosity. It's not quite the same thing, but you could think of it as that, and it causes welds and the metal itself to be weakened. So the point of doing this testing is A36 steel, which is what this is, is not generally known to be susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement. I have read articles that says 3 8 or half inch and above it can experience that, so the point of what we're doing today is we're going to run a weld on here with this wet rod and then we're going to bend test it after it cools down to see what happens if it actually breaks easier because i've done i don't know seven or eight of these and generally speaking they all bend and don't break so if we get a break on that that could be evidence that the hydrogen is playing a role if it doesn't break then it's basically, I wouldn't say unaffected by it, but at least on a small scale, it's not as serious of a concern. Again, you honestly, if you want the highest strength, you, there's no benefit to having hydrogen in your weld pool and in, in your weld, okay? There's none whatsoever, so you're still better off not having it, but we're going to really look at worst case scenario, what does it do? Now, I'll say one more thing, and then we're going to get to welding. I've done a lot of testing on this channel on a lot of rods, 6010, 6011, 6013, 7014, 7024, and I've noticed, well, there's a distinct trend. 7018 has no problem passing a bend test. 7014 uh, does not bend as much as 7018, and neither does 7024, and they all end up breaking somewhere about halfway of what a 7018 will handle for bending. There's a lot of theories. A lot of you guys have shared your ideas on it. I'm thinking it's a possibility that the lack of hydrogen in a 7018 that I've been using 
is part of the reason why I'm not seeing failures. If this fails, that would be pretty sig significant evidence that that's playing a role. If it doesn't fail, well, then it could just be that the weld metal has the right properties for this particular steel to be basically stronger than the steel is because all the other failures are really indicating that the weld metal is not as strong as this. And you guys got to remember, A36 mild steel, hot rolled steel, <clears throat> has a ton of variance in what's acceptable. Like it could be anywhere between, I think, like 60,000 to 70, 80,000 PSI tensile strength. So it, this particular steel, from what I saw on the spec sheet from the steel supplier, is actually definitely stronger than a 60 series rod, but it may be stronger than some of the 70 series. And I know what you're saying. Well, how is that possible? 7014, 7024, and 7018 are all the same strength. And that's where it gets confusing because no, they're not. American Welding Society, AWS, that specifies if you call something a 7014, it has to meet criteria. Same thing with 7018. With all AWS spec rods, they have a minimum for tensile strength. The actual testing of tensile and yield strength are often higher. Like 7018 is not 70,000 PSI tensile strength in actual testing. It's closer to, it's 80, 81, 82,000. And that's why I think we're seeing the 7014, 7024 fail on this test is not because, you know, oh, they're all 70,000 PSI. It's no, they're not. I believe that the 7018 is likely testing high enough to where uh, it can pass this test and 7014, 7024 are just flat out not. Even though they're all the same, they're not. With that said, let's get to welding this. All right, so I'm all set up here. I got my fillet weld that we're going to do, and I also have this little spare junk plate here. What I'm going to do, speaking of that, I'm going to wipe the water off of this just so it's not sopping wet, but you can see, judging by the color, very, very wet. So I'm going to run the fillet weld right here, and then I'm going to immediately come over, run a weld here, and we're going to put this in mineral oil and see if we can see hydrogen escaping that weld. All right, that's probably good enough. I mean, this thing's still soft and wet. You can see how much water is steaming off of this. That's pretty crazy. I'm going to clean this up and we're going to throw it into the mineral oil. So this is the weld I just deposited. And I don't know if you can see it, but all of that white area, that's all bubbles, like millions of little bubbles of hydrogen that are escaping from that weld. You do see some heat thermals coming up because that weld and the plate are hot, but there is absolutely no question at how much hydrogen is escaping out of there. And a normal 7018 weld would not have any of this. Apologize, it's a little difficult to get a clear photo of this or video because of the nature of the mineral oil distorting the way light passes through it. But you can see all them little bubbles collecting and escaping. So this is about as high of hydrogen as you could really have out of a weld. Now, a normal, say, 6010 is about a quarter of this amount, but it does have a significant amount. 7018, like I said, would normally have no bubbles because there's no hydrogen that's escaping that weld.
and it catastrophically broke, which is not too unexpected, <laughs> primarily because of that weld defects that were on there, the undercut, but I'll grab that, set it on the weld bench. Hopefully your safety squints were engaged on that one. So now we have one that appears to have more weld. Well, a little bit of a cold toe. I wish I'll zoom in so you guys can see this. It looks worse than it is, but the toe down here is a little bit cold. So let's uh, chuck this up and see what happens. All right, let's get the bend in it. Don't mind that tape measure. And we have a pass. So you can see lack of fusion, overall rough, very rough start. After that, it, it did settle down quite a bit, but far from perfect. So I'm not going to film the pressure gauge, but I'll tell you what it reads. And I'll be honest about it because. We'll see if this passes. I mean, you'll know if I can flatten this out that clearly didn't have any issues. It's up at six tons. All right, five tons. Let me make sure this is recording. Yep, it is recording. All right. Just over four tons. Still at four tons. Going up five tons. Five tons. Now it's really skyrocketing. Over six. Wow, still did not break. Don't mind the airplane. Jesus Christ, that's a strong bastard. All right, let's look at it on the weld table. So that result was quite interesting. Uh, the second weld I did held up. It has the same indications as previous 7018s where when it's under the maximal load, it does start to crack slightly, tear at the toe line. And I'll show you the up close of that. But the second one did not fail. I assure you that there was uh, hydrogen in it. The first one failed. Now there's going to be a couple reasons for that. Let's look at this up close. So like I had said, this thing welded like absolute dog turds. I mean, visibly you can see all that undercut. Shockingly enough, the undercut didn't really matter because the weld itself broke through halfway. And when you open it up, you can see exactly why. 
every little speck of this is porosity. There's like kind of like a cavern that was underneath this. Porosity there. Porosity here. And this is where that big hole was of porosity. The end of it, if you look here, huge hole of porosity. So terrible. Now when we look at this, you can see that cavern of porosity. Like that's a, you could mine uh, rubies in that one. Big piece here. So real, realistically, what I think happened here, we got nowhere near the maximal load on this and it just catastrophically failed. And I think that is basically due to all of these weld defects. Now, hydrogen embrittlement is not going to cause visible pores like this. This is caused, I mean, yeah, it could be escaping gas out of the area. It totally could be that. I mean, the, the flux, you saw the rod was smoking because of how much moisture was boiling off. So all of that likely played a role into why we have this porosity here. And ultimately, the rod simply was too contaminated to make a decent weld. Now, this one, and you can see how it has a typical crack on the top tow line passed. However, it welded better. It could be simply an issue of enough of the moisture baked off of this to where it was, I guess, easier to run a, a decent pass. I don't see any visible porosity on the surface, but, you know, again, there's no question that this had escaping hydrogen out of it. I can assure you that because this rod that I welded this with was still soaking wet and smoking from the heat driving off that moisture and the steam. Very interesting results. Well, let's go to conclusion. So a couple other things I'm going to mention here. I actually did a couple more tests. This is one of them, and I actually did a couple more where I tested, same as what you saw, wet rods, and the only weld out of five or so I did that failed was this one, which is clearly, you know, weld defects. Hydrogen embrittlement, the pores aren't really visible like this, and the effect of it isn't, so this is just weld defects due to stupidity of welding with a completely soaking wet rod. But shockingly enough, Ones that were welded with uh, very high hydrogen still passed. So that kind of leaves us in, a, in an interesting pickle of sorts because in the previous videos that I tested these rods in 7018, 7014, 7024, all of those, 7018 has no real problem passing bending like this. The only one actually that's failed is this for clear reasons. But 7014 and 7024 do not bend this much, they can't handle the stress of this, and they break far before this does. So what does that really mean? Well, for me, I thought that maybe hydrogen embrittlement was playing a role in why 7018 was passing, because 7018 and 7016 had no problem passing this, but again, 7014, 7024 broke far before it. So at this point, based on what I saw in this testing, I'm going to say that hydrogen embrittlement probably is not a contributing factor. Maybe it's a contributing factor, but it's definitely not the main factor as to why 7018 is so strong in comparison to 7014. Now, a lot of guys have left a ton of comments and, oh, well, it's just a ductility. It's this, it's that. And the reality is, is that when you look up specs for 7014 rods, 7018, 7016, 7024, etc., a lot of uh, the rods besides 7018 have better elongation, and a lot of their specs would suggest that they're actually slightly more ductile. And they, don't take my word for it, look up the specs, the actual tested specs, not AWS minimums. And I think you would find that, I don't know that just straight ductility is a reason why 7018 is surpassing the strength of other 70 series rods. I think if I had to form an opinion on it, I think what's going on is it's a combination of things. The primary one being is that 7018, the actual weld test strength of both yield and ultimate tensile strength 
is higher than the steel is, and it's higher than a lot of the other rods actual testing. And again, you know, everyone says, oh, well, it's 70,000, 70,000. Well, no, it's not, buddy. <laughs> the actual, that's minimums. So 7018 in practice, I believe, is just simply stronger in both tensile, stronger in yield, and effectively, maybe it does have more elongation. And those factors contributed are the seven herbs and spices that allows this rod to deposit uh, arguably... I don't want to call it the perfect weld, but a very strong, reliable weld on stuff like this. So that's really what I think is going on. And I will be doing further testing in the future where we're going to do something a little bit different than fillet welds. Uh, I'm going to do like a, I guess, kind of like make triangles and then flatten them, welding both sides, kind of like an outside corner and flatten them and see uh, that'll stress welds better I guess both toes because you're equally spreading it out the weld will be stressed equally in theory and that I think will also repeat what we're seeing here which is that 7018 is very strong so in conclusion what did we learn today well we learned that a soaking wet rod can deposit a weld on A36 steel that surpasses the strength of 7014 and 7024 uh, and all of the 60 series rods. And take it for what it is. I know a lot of people say, that, oh, I don't use 7018 because of rod storage requirements. Again, that rod storage requirement is to give you an ability to weld high strength steel. It is not for the particular rod and substituting another rod in replacement for 7018 that's going to impart more hydrogen. So in the off chance you do weld high strength steel, you're likely going to have a very high failure rate with 7014 and even a 7018 that's just held in a factory box that isn't like perfectly sealed or a rod oven, it's still going to outperform 7014. This test proves it. I mean, how much more water can you put in a rod than a five day soak in a bottle of water and it's still surpassed 7014, 7024 in this test. And again, is this ul the ultimate, you know, if, if it passes, it's great. If it doesn't, it sucks. No, this isn't, you know, it's not that simple. But this is a great representation of something you might weld. Like it could be something on a trailer chain pocket like this or whatever. And ultimately, if you want to make strong welds, if the plate bends and the weld doesn't break or detach, you have a strong weld. Like if this was on a trailer and you bumped it into a light pole or something or somebody hit it, this thing is still attached and hasn't failed. If you hit this or did the same thing with 7014 or any 60 series rods, you'd be re-welding it, you know, because it would have broke. Now granted, this would be all banged up and pretty much useless anyways. However, at least it's still attached. I'll take still attached versus broken too. So if you have any comments, questions, thoughts on this, feel free to leave them. I know this is a controversial topic and no, the lawyer disclaimer, I'll say right now, this is not an end all be all. There's too many variables like dealing with steel where you might weld on something that is susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement, not realize it. And then you have a catastrophic failure. So the truth is, you should always use your 7018s out of a hermetically sealed pack. Try and keep moisture out of them. And if you're really worried about having the ultimate strength or you know you're welding on something of high strength steel, you must abide by the proper rod oven and storage requirements as needed. Some of them, like I said, you can pull them right out of the pack and weld with them. So this isn't, you know, don't give a shit weld with any 7018 off the floor like you're stupid if you do that so that's the, the lawyer disclaimer with that said thanks for sticking around for the video hopefully you learned something until next time